Welcome back, everyone. We're here today with episode 218 of the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. I'm Dr. Steve Cabral, board certified doctor of naturopathy and founder of the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. We help integrative health practitioners become, or we help regular everyday people become certified health coaches, as well as people in the health and fitness space field to up their knowledge in terms of functional medicine and help people to a greater degree all over the world. One of the things that we love to do on this podcast, it's for everyone, not just I, HPs is to teach you how to become a better coach so that you can have a more fruitful career, that you can help more clients, that you can have more effect in the world. So today though, is really that effect part of it. Like I just, I want to make sure that we're not always focused on how we need to be able to build this and hit these numbers, et cetera. What I want you to do is that times are, there's going to be tough times in your work. There really are. There's going to be challenges. We all go through them. Believe me, I love to, you know, future cast and have a vision for the best possible possible scenario in the brightest possible future. And most of the time it is like that, but we are going to go through our own challenges. When we do, I want you to focus on these three effects. Every health coach has to stay focused on them. Now, again, you could be a chiropractor, a personal trainer, yoga instructor, massage therapist, esthetician, but anybody in the service industry, you have to stay focused on these three effects. So I'm going to go through those here today. I bet you probably have one of your own. I would love to hear what that is in the comments. So do feel free to leave it below this video. All right. The first effect that I want you to focus on is this. It's that the focus, because we're going to go through you, we're going to go through clients, we're going to go through you know the greater picture. But we need to focus as well on the effect your business is having on you. Now, oftentimes, we don't think about ourselves. We're in this industry, we're in this field to serve others. Most of us are. I mean, that's the truth. Like most of us got into this field because we want to do good. Maybe we were harmed in some way by maybe conventional medicine. Maybe like me, I was put on 3000 capsules of amoxicillin three years, right? So three years, every single day, twice a day of amoxicillin, not even counting what I took before the age of 14 years old. So that's certainly a wrong, right? It's certainly a wrong. And I just want to say, there's a better way to do things. Let me try to help now, right? Years later. So that sometimes it's just about our own story. And we just want to say like, hey, if I can help someone else not to have to go through this, that's what I want to do. Or if they did go through the same thing, how to begin to heal. So it's a fo- it, the focus does matter though. The focus does uh, have to be, how do we feel at the end of the day? All right, so the first focus is, how do you feel at the end of the day? Most days, we're all gonna have bad days. Don't get me wrong. Like we, we have bad days, like once a month, maybe twice a month, maximum, but not really more than that. Shouldn't even be once a week because- What happens is this, if you are not having good days or at the end of the day, you don't feel satisfied, you don't feel proud of the work that you're doing, not in an ego perspective, but like, wow, that was great. You know, I really feel like I made a difference today. If you're not feeling that at the end of the day, I want you to look for one of these things. Are you more focused on the money that you're trying to make or the difference that you're trying to make? I've always found that when I focus on trying to make a difference, I feel better at the end of the day, and I've always been able to earn more income. So I want you to focus on that. Is it about the money or is it about making the difference? Because you should be able to have both, but I found that if you focus on making the difference, you feel better at the end of the day, allows you to do better work, more people hear about you, and then of course you earn more income. So I would focus on that. The other is this, you might love the work, but maybe you're putting in too many hours. So like when I had my, my second location, my, my wellness center, amazing. We're doing 20,000 plus appointments a year. I've got 20 something people on my team, but I was working 80 hours a week. That's not an exaggeration. It was probably more than that. And I loved what I did. It's what I've always wanted to do, but I was doing too much of it. Somewhere between 50 and 60 hours. Now I know people say, oh, you should only work 36 hours, 40 hours, whatever it might be, that's fine. But if it's a full-time career, it's what you love, you're probably going to be working a little bit more than that. You know, 10 hours a day times five days is 50 hours. Eight hours a day times five days is 40 hours. So, but like some people, they're built more to work, meaning like they enjoy more of the work and they don't get burnt out by it. And some people need to work a little bit less. So what I'm sharing with you is this, there's no set number of hours to work. So we have a lot of IHPs that work five to 10 hours a week and they do it part-time. I don't know that this is applying directly to them, but it could be because sometimes when you don't have enough you time and you're working too much, even though it's the work that you want to be doing, it's just too much of it. 
I need to cut back a little bit. So when I went from 80 hours to 60 hours, game changer, like totally different. Like, oh, I could do that forever, right? A couple hours, uh, if I need to check in on the weekend, 10 to 12 hours, Monday through Friday. Again, it's not for everyone. I'm not saying that that's you know, what you need to be doing. And there are obviously days that uh, I work far, far less. But you know, somewhere around that range, uh, if you are running a full-time company, is not unheard of. But you have to understand is that you have to look at what works for you. So if you're juggling your family, uh, you're trying to help out with a family business, and you're running your own, yeah, it might be too much. So if you look at it, yeah, in no one business are you working more than 40 hours, but if you add them all up, you might be working 60, 70 hours, right? It's a lot. And so what I want you to understand is that sometimes it's not the work, it's the amount of the work that you're doing. So you might need to cut back a little bit. And the third part, if you're not feeling good at the end of the day, is we wanna focus, and this is really important, so we're gonna be kind of like honing on that word focus, is that sometimes it's just one client or one employee that really doesn't make you enjoy your work. Now, I've had both. I've had an employee before when I had my wellness center that just was not the right fit. I mean, they caused so much headaches. They would miss appointments with their clients. They would sometimes not show up. And they always had an excuse. And it was always like, well, I mean, it's stuff's going on in their life. And you understand it, but it's really hard to run a business that way because they have clients that are counting on them to show up. And when they don't, well, it's you, you're the owner putting your stamp of, stamp of approval on it. So that's really challenging, but it's not the whole business, it's that one individual. And the other part of it, and I've told this before on a previous podcast, we'll try to link it up here today at ihp.coach forward slash 218. I've had one client, one client that literally made me want to get out of this career for that one client. And then I realized, oh, I have to let this client go. And I did that and I felt bad about it, but then I could move on and help all the other people I was helping. And then I felt great. So we had to look at that. And so the first effect or the first focus should be on you. Why on you? And I know it seems selfish because none of this works. There is no you in a career as a health professional without you right? You need to be in the game. All right, so that's the first one. And it's important because all the people you work with, they don't get any benefit if you don't show up. All right, so do what you can, but not everything, not too much. The second one is this, focusing on your mission of helping someone get well. So there'll be challenging times, challenging days. What do we need to focus on? That at the end of the day, you are helping people overcome something that they wouldn't be able to do without you. That's the truth, or it would take years longer. They would have to go through hundreds of different protocols like I did, or maybe dozens of other different types of practitioners, but you, especially if you're at IHP level two, you can run a lab, look at the underlying root cause imbalances, digestive-based, heavy metals, hormones, omega-6s, all these different things, be like, okay, this is what's high, this is what's low, we're gonna bring up what's low, we're gonna take down these toxicities that are high. Like you can do that. And that is the highest level of health and help, of, of helping somebody. So at the end of the day, feel good. Feel the effect you are having on those individuals. Might be frustrating for them, might be frustrating for you, but you are making a genuine difference in their lives. And that, I mean, that cannot be stated strong enough. You are making a difference in the world and in people's lives. And the third one goes beyond that. So the first one is you. The second one is them, the client, right? So first you, then the client. You have to enjoy your work. Number two, you have to be there in order to help them shortcut their way to success. And I don't mean there's a fast and easy way to do it, but you get to get rid of all the stuff that doesn't work and tell them and help them with what does. But then the third one is the most powerful. It's the ripple effect that you have on the lives of everyone that is touched by your client that you're working with. Think about this. You're working with a mom and she's depressed. Um, she's got bloating. She's got hormonal imbalances. Uh, night sweats, migraines. She's really like, she's at the end 
of her rope, as they say. Her nervous system is shot. She's burnt out. She comes to you. You show her, okay, there's low B vitamin levels. There's low levels of magnesium. You have high levels of mercury, low levels of thyroid hormone. And the reason you can't sleep at night is you have low levels of cortisol in the morning and high levels of cortisol at night. We can rebalance that. We can help you fix this over 12 to 16 weeks. And you work with her, you work with the whole de-stress protocol, the diet aspect, the exercise, the stress reduction, the toxin removal, the rest protocols, emotional balance, scientifically backed supplements, right? And the success mindset. And six weeks, 16 weeks later, she's a brand new person. Her kids benefit, her spouse benefits, parents benefit, her community benefits, everybody benefits. Why? Improved energy, improved mood, improved outlook on life, all of those things. And now she's the role model that she always wanted to be now for her uh, kids and her community and everything. She gets to now live life to the fullest. So you're helping her in number two, right? But in number three, she has her own sphere of influence. She has her own circle, just like we all do. And when you help her get better, everybody else's life around her improves as well. That goes for all of us. So now you're not helping one individual. You're helping the entire family, extended family, maybe even coworkers, and certainly community. So for every one person you help, you're probably helping 12, maybe 30 people, right? Somewhere in that range, 10 to 30 people in like someone's real sphere of influence, They've got their immediate family, they've got their siblings and parents or so, and then they have their you know, friends that they hang out with, then maybe a small group of coworkers or so, or small community. Somewhere between 10 and you know, 30 people. And those people's lives change because of the attitude, energy, and outlook now of the individual you helped. So yes, you're probably gonna get a lot of referrals from that, but that's not what it's about. What it's about is that you helped one person, and it changed the lives of many people that they'll go out and touch. And that, to me, is one of the most remarkable things about this industry. There's so few industries where if you help someone, it changes the lives of those people around them. So what I wanted to just share with you is this, is that we all have hard days. We really do. But hopefully when you're having one of those hard days, you come back, you listen to this episode, ihp.coach forward slash 218. You mark it down. Because I always want you to remember that you are doing work that matters. It can be challenging, but it matters. It matters to that person that you're sitting across. It matters to all of the people that they're going to touch in their own life, and it matters to you. It makes you feel good about the work and the difference that you're making in your life and in the lives of others, right? Because what you're doing has meaning. It has meaning for you, for the person you're working with, and all of their close relatives, friends, and family as well. So thank you so much for allowing me to talk on this topic here today. It's one that doesn't get discussed enough. Let me know what you thought in the comments below and if there's any other topics you'd love to hear on the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Thanks so much, everybody. Have an amazing day.